guys through a look at Skylander Superchargers. As I mentioned, it's going to be a brand new level that we're showing off for the very first time at E3. It's actually a level where uh, we as the, the player and the Skylanders get to go in search for the Cloud Breather Dragon, which is this massive dragon who's going to help us in our quest to kind of defeat Chaos. And so in this level, you'll see it's kind of this occupied village where Chaos's forces have taken over, and we've got this really cool set of uh, NPCs who will kind of subtly guide us along our path while also not, you know, lending their hand to the fact that they're trying to overthrow chaos. And so, as you guys know, the big innovation this year is Vicarious Visions has not only brought our characters and Skylanders to life, but now also brought vehicles to life. And that means taking to the land, the sea, and the sky with different types of vehicles like planes, biplanes, helicopters, motorcycles, tanks, hovercrafts, speedsters, what did I miss? I haven't even gone to the, 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 the sea vehicles yet. It's boats, uh, hovercrafts, and submarines. So tons of different types of toys. Um, and we're really excited to be able to show you guys what we've been working on. So we're going to hop right in here to Skylander Superchargers. How you doing up there, Flintster? Woo! I think I just ate my own face! All right, Skylander. We've almost reached the Cloud Scraper Mountains. Once we get there, you can call the dragon from the summoning gong at the top of the mountain. But be extra careful. Chaos's forces have taken over the surrounding villages. Get ready, everyone! Brace for re-entry in three, two... Oh! So we're going to begin our demo by placing a vehicle on the Portal of Power. And I'm going to bring in a sea vehicle that we're showing for the first time here at E3. This is Reef Ripper. And now one of the things that we announced when we revealed the game is that our vehicle toys, they don't have bases. Because we want them to feel like a real vehicle toy. And so that means you can see we've got Hot Streak, Sky Slicer, Dive Bomber, and now Reef Ripper. We've got these really cool, exciting, base-free vehicle toys where on these designs where it makes sense, we've got some really fun articulation to play with these vehicles outside of the game as well. And so for Reef Ripper, he's kind of got a fish tail, which you can move around, which is really neat. And so you can see the wave there, which is our sea iconography. Reef Ripper, Aquafin Turbine, Gill Grill, Ocean Upheaval. And so the first time you bring a vehicle on the Portal of Power, we expand the magic moment past what we've done in the you know, previous titles. We want to do that to give you kind of a really cool vehicle showcase, highlighting some of the key features on these vehicles. And it's something that we do the first time you bring it in, and then once you go through the game additionally, we speed it up to get you into the action quicker and quicker. And so next... Just the first time, right? Just the first time, correct. And so next I'm going to be bringing in a supercharger which is called Shark Shooter Terrafin. Now you guys might remember Terrafin from the previous games. What we're doing this year is kind of different than what we've done in the past. And so previously we've done, say, a Series 2 or Series 3 version of a character. We give them an additional wow pal. Well, this year what we're doing is actually redesigning these characters completely from the ground up. And so we've given them brand new weapons, brand new outfits, completely new upgrade paths, and they really feel like brand new characters but with the same kind of personality that fans have come to expect from Terra. Hey, and so you'll see he's traded in his kind of melee attacks 
for this awesome shark rocket launcher, which when fired causes these, you know, rockets to burrow underground and chase after enemies. Sounded the alarms. Brought in the reinforcements here. And so speaking of the alarms, because this is an occupied kind of area here, they've actually put these alarms throughout the level. And so as David takes on these enemies, he has to not only defeat the enemies, but also destroy the alarm. Because if he leaves the alarm going, then more and more reinforcements will continue to come in. And so David's going to use... The awesome shark rockets, the ability to go underwater and shoot outward with his rocket launcher, as well as that really cool kind of forward dive, which launches the rockets into the sky. And so back there is the Cloud Breather Dragon. You can also see he's got a temple on his back, which is actually our ultimate objective to get there. forces of Emperor Chaos have sealed all the gates leading to the temple. They will only respond to the gate gong, which is kept in pieces for security purposes. I can't reassemble the gate gong without explicit orders. But, you know, I wasn't ordered to stop any determined heroic Skylander types from putting it back together. If they were so inclined. These guys are my favorite. They're the passive-aggressive <laughs> villagers telling us secretly what to do. Hey, look at that! Someone put the gate gong together. Hmm, weird. And so, by ringing the gate gong, we'll actually unlock the gate. Hey. So one of the fun things for us is to hide secrets and side paths and hidden areas throughout our worlds, and this level is no different. And so you'll see here, we've got these strange symbols above the doorway. Now those actually correspond to a number of gongs hidden in this area. And by ringing them in a the specific order, we'll actually unlock a hidden area. is open and David can enter. And so he's found a bunch of treasure as well as something new which is our random luck chests. And so what we're doing this year is randomizing our hidden loot. And so David this time has found a hat but he could have also found a legendary treasure or maybe even a soul gem. And so it's really there to kind of encourage players to continually replay these levels and find new rewards. So in the interest of time, we're actually going to hop ahead in the level, a bit further into the awesome village here, and you'll see an airship fly by and launch flaming toilet plungers at us. So you'll see up ahead is a sea area, which is our ultimate objective, but David's got to take out some of these new spinning enemies before we can get there. And so you'll see these guys keep spinning around are completely shielded until they dizzy themselves. Gotta get some pizza. Nicely done, David. And so now we found our first vehicle threshold. We're going to find out what our mission is. Benevolent forces of chaos have blocked the natural irrigation shafts beneath the village and flooded it. They said something about needing a spa day. I don't know. If a Skylander wanted to heroically drain all this water, they'd have to dive down there and clear the blockages. Only a brave and mighty Skylander would dare challenge Emperor Chaos and clear the underwater blockages. Alright, and while walking up, you'll see Reef Ripper springs into action, and we can hop in seamlessly going from on foot into vehicle based game. And so, all of our levels feature land, sea, and sky based gameplay, which is seamlessly integrated into our on foot experience. And 
And so you'll see here, David's now in our submarine, the Reef Ripper, completely underwater as he's exploring this kind of area here to try and destroy these drains and clear the village. Only two drains left to unclog, Skylander. Now, before David moves on forward, I want to show you guys another really cool feature of the game. And so, one of the things that we're excited about is that this year we're going to have 20 vehicles and we're going to have 20 superchargers. Now, the reason that those numbers match up is because there is actually a matching pair for each vehicle and supercharger. And so you can actually see it really clearly here. We've got Spitfire and Hot Streak, which is our land vehicle. And you can kind of see how they've got the same coloring, the same elemental kind of feel where it's got the blue flame and the blue flame. Well, pairing these perfect combinations together will actually supercharge your combo. And you'll see when I put Deep Dive Gilgrunt, which is another new character that we're showing off here at E3 for the first time, on the portal, that Reef Ripper will take on a brand new look. Supercharge. So you'll see it's got a brass finish, its engine in the back has changed, as well as the front has got these really cool trident spikes. And it's also just kind of rippling with electric energy. The reason that is is because your vehicle's attacks also become supercharged, and you get a damage boost when you're playing with a supercharged combo against enemies. Now, all of our vehicles have unique attacks, and so you'll see here that the Reef Ripper is all about firing these electrified harpoons, as well as this really cool electric kind of see an enemy-like explosion, which bursts energy from the, the outside of its hull. But we wanted to make sure that each of the vehicles kind of has their own feel, and a lot of variety is focused on making each of these vehicles play different. So David's gonna pass by. Ooh, nice. So one of the additional things that we've got here is modding. And so you guys can kind of see it when you do a supercharged moment where the parts change. But we've got that throughout the game. So when you're playing with a supercharger of any type of your vehicle, you can actually collect these mods. And this is kind of Skylander's way of tuning your car. And so instead of asking kids to you know fiddle with some screws and knobs under the hood, we're doing that by changing parts of the vehicle, which are really substantially different. So you'll see here, the Spearfish driver, which is really cool, changes the look of the vehicle entirely. But it also changes the things that you get when changing the stats or tuning your vehicle. So your armor, your speed, your handling, your acceleration. So now we're draining the lake. specific smell. And so we get our star of completion, which actually fills in our portal master rank. Now before we skip ahead, I want to show you a couple of the things the deep dive Gilgrunt can do. And so if you remember, past Gilgrunt had kind of a, a water hose as his attack. Well now he's got this awesome electrified trident, but he also still has his aquatic backpack. And so this actually enables him to have multiple new types of moves where he can shoot lasers out of it, lightning strikes, he can fly around throwing waves at enemies, he can even swirl around, which is really cool, causing this vortex to appear around him. So overall, just a really unique way to take a character that fans know and love and make him feel completely new and unique. And so now we're going to skip ahead. You must have a land vehicle to enter this zone. And so we're going to switch to a land vehicle. Ah, where did they all come from? <laughs> and so we're going to take Reef Ripper off, and we're going to switch to our land vehicle, Hot Streak. And you can see the iconography for land are these mountains on a road. Hot Streak. Blaze Booster. Blue Fire Tires. 
Now, one thing to note is that that camera showcase really highlights specific things. So it shows off the two parts of the vehicle that you're actually able to modify. So for this vehicle, it's the engine and then the tires. And then it also highlights the vehicle's weapon. So for this, you'll see is kind of this awesome flamethrower coming out of the grill in front. So David's going to hop in. Strap in the face. So here we're going to try and catch up with the Clavarina Dragon, who we've actually awoken already. And so this first area is more of an open vehicle arena. So this is focused on combat. And so you can see all the cool things that a hot streak can do. He can zoom forward with that flaming charge attack, and he can use an awesome magical flamethrower. Now along the way, you can see David's also using his drift button to kind of do donuts and strafe around the enemy as well. What's really exciting is we've got a lot of hidden areas built in, which also have hidden power-ups. And so David just found an additional damage boost area, and so he's got this power-up, which you'll see is souping up his vehicle. So the other way to soup up your vehicle is to create that perfect pair. And so I'm going to switch out Deep Dive Gilgrunt, and I'm going to bring in Spitfire to really supercharge our vehicle and get that damage boost against these enemies. You'll see once again, supercharging your vehicle unlocks the craziest version of this vehicle possible. Spitfire's got these awesome new engines, as well as flaming wheels. Flip at the end, but that was stylish. Yeah. All right. So the the dragon's on its way, and so David's gonna try and catch up with him. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I want you to catch up with that dragon. Yeah. Gonna collect some gear bits along the way, which is our new form of currency for our vehicles. So you'll use those to upgrade your vehicle's weapons and shields. And if David can make this jump, we're now driving up the back of the Cloud Breather Dragon. So one of the things that's really cool about these gear bits is that there's actually a, a really neat mini game tied to it where the better you drive and the more skill you use while you drive, so if you hit jumps, if you boost, if you, if you drift into them, those super or those gear bits will actually supercharge and they'll triple in value. And so it really encourages players to try each section to go through with the best amount of skill as possible. And so David has now reached the temple on the back of the Cloud Breather Dragon. See you at the finish. And so you'll actually see how the level is actually swaying Thank goodness you've reached this because level. the Cloud Breather is flying through the sky. So it's our objective to try and defeat Chaos's minions who are trying to defeat or destroy the temple on the back of the Cloud Breather. And you'll see as the world sways, so do the objects within it, like these mines. Skylanders and the light element are stronger in this zone. So you heard there, Eon mentioned the light element, which is our light and dark elements are back for Skylander Superchargers. So up ahead we have a sky section. They're launching a final assault on our sacred dragon temple. If it's destroyed, no one will be able to speak with the cloud breather. You have to stop this aerial attack, Skylander, and save the temple. Alright, so you now we're gonna switch. Hot streak out for our Sky Vehicle, Sky Slicer. Now, a thing to note is that the starter pack comes with the land vehicle. So the land is really the only terrain type that you need to see all of the levels and to play the story of the game. The sea and the sky are really side content, but it's also the most robust and exciting side content we've ever put into our levels. So now David's going to take to the skies. 
So this is really cool. He's actually flying above the Cloud Breather Dragon, and he's got a full 360 degree range of movement. So he can fly around, looping around, watching out for oncoming enemy attacks, and die, uh, basically dogfighting against these enemies. And so his objective here is to destroy some of Chaos's uh, special sh ships as part of the fleet. And as he's doing that, he can fly around, we can barrel roll, we can go up, we can go down. You have that added range of movement that you'd expect from flight. Because what we wanted to do is make it so that each of our terrain types kind of fulfills that vehicle fantasy. And so exploring the waves and the underwater, per sea, you know, speeding around, doing donuts, drifting around with land, as well as flying, that added range of movement per sky. So it looks like two big warships have come in, and it's going to be David's objective here to try and take these guys out. So luckily, we've got specific attacks for Sky Slicer that are really effective. A really rapid fire primary shot, and then a multi-lock missile for a secondary shot. So it looks like David had one of those enemies on his tail, and that's where you'll need to do a barrel roll to shake it. So that's our look at our new Cloud Breather Dragon level. We're actually going to switch over. One of the things that we wanted to show you was the level of variety that we're putting <laughs> into the game. We want to make it, you know, so that every level and every experience with these vehicles is a little different. And so in the first level we showed you, the sea section was actually all about going underwater and exploring these caverns and trying to clear out the blockages. Well, in our reveal level, we're going to hop in and show you something quite a bit different. There's the queen! Let's go pick up the thunderous bolt and get out of here! Well, yeah, you, to the we're going to skip past the things I here. Sorry, Skylander. Right. We're going to bring in another one of our sea vehicles. This is Dive Bomber. And another one of our supercharger Skylanders. This is Stormblade. dandy teleporters off to the side so we can really quickly show you yeah it's the far left one all right the stratosphere has overwhelmed the sunken storm sequencer if you can dive below and destroy it the electric dynamos will be powerless disable the sunken storm sequencer to shut down these dynamos skylander all right, so this is David's objective for this season, where he's going to hop in, speed down the canals of the Cloud Kingdom in an effort to getting to that storm sequencer, which he needs to destroy. Let's and so here you'll see the amount of variety that we're putting into these sequences. You're not completely submerged. You're now skimming along the surface of these canals. That being said, at any time, with a single press of a button, you can submerge. So the team is effectively building two tracks on top of each other. And so you'll see, by up ahead, when we dive underneath the waves, that there are actually hidden side paths to be found both above and below the surface of the water. So here off to the left, you can find a hidden area. And so like I was saying is that we really want to make sure that every level of the game is varied and your experiences with each of these vehicles are fulfilling fantasies that you've always wanted to have with sea, land, and sky type of vehicles. David actually found my favorite mod in the game, which is Mr. Squeaks, our inflatable <coughs> pool toy for an engine. Power propeller. Deep diving. Mr. Yeah, Mr. 
squeaks. <laughs> So you'll see, throughout this sequence, David is able to the press of a button, go surface level, or submerge. And we've actually built a track up ahead with obstacles on both. And so you're going to need to go above and below to make your way to the storm sequence. sequencer is going to charge up, slam down, and it actually creates the waves in this arena. And so you're actually going on the waves that it's creating. It also has this lightning attack that when striking the water will dynamically change the surface of the water, causing it to ripple and undulate for the player to skim across the surface of it. And so here we've got additional enemy types, because each of our terrain types has their own unique enemies. And so here we've got these charging uh, undersea submersible guys who will dive below, charge under, and scoot up, so you can't just depend on hiding underwater and hoping that they won't hit you. And so here Dive Bomber has the ability to use a torpedo, but also has the ability to use a sonar ping, which will cause all of the torpedoes to lock on to the target. And so the reason that the water level was so important is you'll see it's now got this sweeper arm, and David's able to ride the high waves to be able to jump over the sweeper arm. And so we now have an additional enemy type. These guys are crazy because they're armored gunboats. And so you can try and take them out, but they've got a lot of armor, so it's going to take a little while. But David's clever. He can dive below the surface and lure the lightning strike from the storm sequencer into the gunboats to destroy them uh, for him. Nice, Dave. And so now we've got both enemies at once. And so what you need to do is take these guys out primarily, so that way the undersea surface is safer for you to take those guys out. Or you can all lure them into the same lightning strike, taking them out at once. And so this level is about a quarter of the way through the game. And so really all these things we're teaching the player as they go. And so that way you're learning and actually evolving your techniques for each of these terrain types. So here we're going to see if David can take out the storm sequencer. And the massive explosion will send our vehicle soaring through the sky back to the dock. And so this is really to show you the level of variety and different type of experience that you can imagine for each of the land, the sea, and the sky sequences. Because every level we try and change it up and really play with your expectations and experience. So I think that is our look at Skylander Superchargers.